Another Indian student in the United States has been found dead this time. Vivek Saini, a 25-year-old Indian student, was killed. It's only been increasing of late, which is surprising. It's unfortunate. It's almost scary. Especially because I have a child. I am a mother. Uh, Every morning when I send her to school, I'm always like... <laughs> you know? Before we start, let me just say that I feel really sad to be making this video. Uh, this is not the type of content you want to be talking about. But in this channel, we bring you real authentic account of the US visa process of studying in the US and the life in the US. So this topic had to be addressed. Seven Indian students have died in the last few months in the US, most of them under very weird and mysterious circumstances. And this raises a lot of questions about the safety of studying and living in the US. And this is something you have to consider if you're a student or if you're a parent who's going to send their child to the US. In this video, I have with me Elena and Elena is a current student of Purdue University. Now do keep in mind that Purdue University is the one where two Indian students have died recently. And Elena shares a very real authentic account of the current situation in the university, some insights on what is leading to these incidents and most importantly, all the information that you should have about your accommodation, about people you stay with, and the safety measures that are available to you. So do make sure that you watch this video before you go to the US, and please share it with your friends and family. Hi, sure, sure. So I am Melina, Elena Daudani. I'm a third year PhD student at Purdue in Nutrition Sciences. Um, yeah, and I, I, I don't live a very typical life here, meaning, um, a like when students come from India, they usually come alone um, and they have their set of struggles because they are, you know, they may or may not be on stipend. They may or may not be working. They have huge student loans, etc. But here's the thing about a PhD in the US that it's usually fully funded. So in my case, I came here with my family, my husband and my daughter. My husband's also working. So we live in a home, we like a house. We do not live in student housing. So um, yeah, it's not a very typical setup, but it's worked brilliantly for us. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity. All right, so three years in Purdue and um, the recent incidents that we have heard, right? Which uh, unfortunately only seems to be escalating like every week. Uh, yeah. In your three years here, did you come across any such scenario that we are facing today? Myself personally, no. Uh, I haven't really, and honestly, like being a woman or being a hijabi, you you may think that, okay, I might be uh, judged or whatever, but personally myself, no, I feel pretty safe here. Uh, I don't even know of anyone uh, closely who has gone through something like this, but like you rightly mentioned, it's only been increasing of late, which is surprising. It's unfortunate. It's almost scary. Uh, so gun violence in the US, we all know you cannot really just uh, yeah. under the man and say no it doesn't exist we know it's there and it's a reality especially because I have a child I am a mother uh, every morning when I send her to school I'm always like <laughs> you know it's always difficult I don't think yeah. I'll ever come to peace with the fact that okay yeah, hell, it's a reality that I have to live with but that being said I personally haven't uh, myself encountered anything of that sort that would um and I think that also has to do with the fact, uh, you know, that the people that you surround yourself with are important. How safe you keep yourself is also important. I believe this is this is for any place, anywhere you live. If you uh, choose to travel in dark alleys, you are putting yourself at risk. So I think making sure that as a person you take care of yourself is important. But yeah, of late, this has been... Um, much more prevalent than before, uh, especially in the last one month, we've seen two cases of Indian boys, unfortunately being, I don't know, targeted or what, because we don't really know the the actual story yet, but both of them recently passed away, which is very unfortunate, very scary. Um, and I received so many messages from a lot of my friends, from uh, my family, they all were worried because it was all over the news. So yeah, it's it's scary and it's happening a lot more than before, which is why as students, especially international students, we have to be very, very careful. We have to know uh, what the protocols are. We have to know what uh, what services, for instance, we have and, you know, basic safety um, measures that we need to take for ourselves so that we keep ourselves safe here.
So I want to ask you one thing. In the last one year, we have seen a lot of changes in the economy, right? Mm -hmm. Everywhere and I think a little bit more drastically in the US. True. So do you think somewhere these changes in the income structure, economy, opportunities, all of these has some trickle down effect or any other change? Because you've lived there for three years now, right? So in yeah. that period, have you noticed any change in the environment as such, which you feel could be like possible to yeah, I can actually tell you that, for instance, when we used to go for grocery shopping, when we moved here in 2021 versus when we go now, things are very different in terms of how much we pay for the same stuff we did earlier. Right. So yes, inflation has been an issue. And, you know, uh, generally, I don't know how, how many people know about this, but then when we look at more developed countries, we think, hi, hi, but it's a dori hoga. Everyone must be like, you know, well off and all, which is not the case. When you actually come here and you go in these, you know, downtrodden areas, you will actually see a lot of people who are homeless. So, um, it's it's sad. It's in, But I think that's a reality everywhere. Just that here, there's a camouflage for some reason and we are not aware. And also because studies are expensive in the US, a lot of people are un un uneducated, meaning they have never been to school. Uh, they, are, they live in their cars and when those things happen, you obviously see uh, an increase in crime rate. So yes, that possibly has to do with the fact that inflation is on a rise. Uh, what do you want to tell the parents first? That mm -hmm. hey, if you are thinking of sending your child to the US, you know, yeah. uh, please know this. And then we'll mm -hmm. come to the students who have already decided to come. Yeah. I believe, you know, the first and the most important thing I'd like to say is maintaining a good relationship with your child so that he or she feels comfortable to share everything with you. Oftentimes when children are here, uh, they are by themselves. And sometimes a lot of children who move to the US, this is their first experience of living alone, doing things by themselves. Uh, a lot of times, you know, they, they might feel vulnerable. They might feel alone. They might feel uh, that they do not have support here or lonely or whatever but then they're always so concerned about their parents that they don't share those feelings and when they don't share those feelings there is this disconnect between the parent and the child so I think it's very very important that you let your children know that one um, even if they are far away they are close to you etc and they can share everything uh, possible with them and two that don't show a lot of your emotional side to them because that could prevent them from sharing. If, for instance, if they have a bad roommate, they won't feel comfortable sharing that with you because they know that you'd get more worried for mom's them. Going to out if I tell her. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, okay, if I share with my mom, she won't be able to come here and protect me or take care of me. I'll only end up, you know, getting her more worried. But then for you, it's important to know who the roommate is. So having that open connection with them, communication with them is, I think, very, very important. So when these uh, incidents happened, uh, what was the reaction in the university? Like, did you see any specific reaction coming from uh, the university or from the people around you? Like, uh... mm, That's an interesting question. So university, uh, usually when something major happens, we receive an email where the university acknowledges that this has occurred. And for instance, where uh, a year ago, an Indian boy who was a, a U.S. Uh, raised Indian boy, uh, he was stabbed by his Korean roommate. And that was a huge thing because they were living on campus. So this happened, I believe, late at night. Uh, at 2 a.m. or so, I don't remember exactly. And in the morning at 8 exactly, when we start receiving emails from the university, the first email we received was regarding this, that this happened and we are aware and we're taking proper care to address this issue, etc. So uh, when something major happens, we do receive emails from the university. Besides that, uh, we have a lot of small groups uh, in the university. Uh, these groups essentially, like, you know, we have, for example, an Indian Asian community, uh, we have the student uh, uh, government here, which caters to all people, like all graduate students, for instance, not just Asian or Indian or whatever. So whenever something of this sort happens, we usually hold vigils. Uh, and yeah, we receive emails talking about those things. But then that's the only reaction I've seen. I have not seen students protest or anything of that sort. Um, but yes, one thing I'd like to say is that because of these events, uh, a lot have, has been changed in the last few months. 
I believe it was last year, 2023 May, when uh, Purdue announced that they are starting with um, the government announced, the government uh, student organization, if I am not mistaken, that there'd be free shuttle services late at night for students so that they are able to travel in case they are on campus late. Uh, so there has been an increase in those things. I believe that is what they are trying to do to have more services for students. They also keep sending reminders regarding mental health and uh, a lot of these, you know, uh, mental health services are provided for free for students in case, you know, students are stressed, uh, feeling suicidal, depressed, etc. So Purdue does have a lot of those options that they keep talking about very frequently for students' well-being. Well -being. For somebody who's coming to Purdue, uh, like, what is the... Uh, I wouldn't say like advice, but like, what do you, what do you think that person should know that, hey, avoid this. Mm -hmm. This is what, you know, you have to do here. Right. Because the fall season is coming and we're going to have like big chunk yes. of students now who would want to come to Purdue and study there. A few things like I'd like to highlight. Um, so I have seen a lot of students when they come here, uh, sometimes when they are research students, uh, they often work late at night if they have wet labs, for example, or anything of that sort, or even group studies. I've seen a lot of students, both Indian and otherwise, who sit on campus sometimes and they just do group study, like two, three students sit together. But in my opinion, personally speaking, uh, it gets very dark here. Sometimes in winters, it's dark at 536 during summers, sometimes it takes time, but then it's pretty dark. And when I don't stay late tuck, at the university on campus, as soon as your work is done, you can always come back and finish the work like later, talk to your advisor, your professors, whatever, if, if needed, but do not stay late at night. The second thing I'd like to say is, which is very essential, very important, no matter where, which university you've chosen to go to, but research uh, and find more about the background of your roommates. Try and dig in and really know them before you choose to move in with them because you are sharing your life with them and it's very important that you know who that person is. Do they come from a good background? Uh, because like I said, the instance that happened last year was because one of the roommates attacked the other roommate so it's very very important that you know the background of your roommate who they are uh, so that you know you are surrounding yourself with people yeah. you can be with. the third thing uh, I'd like to highlight is that if you have made a group of friends or at least two friends three friends who you know you can trust uh, entirely whenever you're traveling especially late in the evenings share your whereabouts with them inform them for instance I have like a group where we often talk about these things and other things as well so if my friends have been working late in in the wet lab and they have just boarded the city bus they usually message us saying that I've just boarded so that we know that in case they need us we can always go and help them uh, some of us have cars some of us do not so sometimes if we are available we help them you know, reach home, their homes. So it's very important that you surround yourself with people with whom you can share your regular updates with. Right. Also with your parents, uh, make sure you share all the details of your friends, uh, your professors, if you're working in a lab, if they're close to you and your roommates, very important. Make sure your parents have all the information, their contact numbers, email IDs, everything, so that in case they are not able to reach you, they can always reach to your friends and um, get all your information. So it's very, very important that your parents know everything about you, where you live, how far, for example, the nearest grocery store is if you're going, etc., so that they are well versed with your uh, uh, applications that you travel around. Is there any area? which they should not stay in, like if you're coming to Purdue, like any location, because not everyone would stay on campus. So uh, if any housing uh, society or, you know, these rental properties, they are giving you homes with 
a very very cheap at a very cheap price for example if normally it's 500 and they are offering you something for 250 300 always do your background check do not go there if i were you and if i were just starting out here i would go to a place where i know there are a lot of students living and not a lot of localites because um a lot you know sometimes when these housing options are very cheap you'll find a lot of these drug dealers um people who are doing all sorts of wrong things living in those areas and i personally wouldn't put myself at risk uh, living in those areas so i would personally prefer housing options or neighborhoods that have a lot of students and it's very easy to find uh, if you just go uh, if for example you got an offer from purdue for instance and you know you're you going to select purdue they all have most universities including purdue have resources online where they have shared a list of apartments uh, where their students go both on campus and off campus to oh. start out even though it might be a little more expensive than what you may found, find online but always go for those listed uh, apartments or housing options first so that you are at the right place to begin with and then once you come here you can do a little more research and move to a different place later it's always better to when you are starting out always select something that's safe something that you know is authorized and approved by the university meaning it has some um, you know there is some sense of safety right. comparison which's better and than other some background check done right you know exactly. that there is yeah, if the university is uh, approving it and it's listed on their website meaning it's much safer than a lot of options out there i want to ask you is what exact resources are available like one thing like like what you just mentioned that the university will give you a list of housing so uh, adding on to this list what are the safety options uh, available to you that again you should be aware that okay i i have access to this from the university right so there's something that i really liked i've never used uh, which is called purdue student security patrol so there are these bunch of people who are authorized by purdue who you can reach out to any time especially after the dark if you want to just simply walk on the road if you're just walking on the campus or doing anything or anywhere in the entire city you can just call them and say that listen i am here and i think i'm not safe or i need help or i don't know this place so can someone come here and help me and they Any reach time? is Any it like time. okay In, especially after dark so they provide with the service you can just google and search for security patrol purdue and you will find their contact number email id etc you can just reach out to them my friend uh, when she moved here she had her flight i think it landed at 3 am and she came here she was waiting for a cab and she was all by herself and she reached out to them and they came and helped her instantly so they are very efficient i've heard i have i have no personal experience but i think um, from what i've heard they are really good and they are all around on the campus so they can always help you so whenever even when during the daytime you feel that someone is walking behind you you just notice that some behavior that you observed is not safe for you or you for instance observe someone uh, who has like a gun or something and you're scared or you notice something that's very unusual you can always call them and they can come and help you so they are always there uh, it's called again security patrol you can just google and you'll find their contact details so that is one resource that i think i really like and the other one which i think started recently i believe it's been 3 4 months if i'm not wrong it's called rights to you uh this is only for grad students meaning the ones who are doing masters and postdocs and uh, phd and postdoc but i believe it's also for undergrads uh, unke government mein bhi ye hoga ye hamari government ka this is for grad students only at purdue and what they do is uh, that if for example you want to travel anywhere especially after dark you can book cabs via them you just have to make sure that you book uh, a day in advance so for example if you know that tomorrow you're going to be on campus until 6 a pm in the evening or 7 pm you have some work or you have a meeting and you don't feel safe using the city bus you can fill their form and they provide with free cabs for you so you can travel anywhere in the city using the cab services you don't have to pay anything it's funded by them 
and you can travel safely. And so you I have think... shuttle service as well, in addition to this, is it? Sorry? And there's a shuttle, like what you were mentioning yes. earlier. There is a shuttle service, which, uh, yeah, which is across the city yeah. as well. Oh, that's across the city. Okay. So if you want to use the shuttle, that's also free. Uh, yeah. These cabs are also free. So I believe these are good resources that students could use, especially if you're working late at night or if you have, I don't know, you have to attend a meeting uh, or something that you know is going to be uh, on until late. You can always use these services. Okay. And is there any WhatsApp group uh, that oh, the university provides? University doesn't provide with WhatsApp groups, but there are a lot of Facebook groups. Uh, and wo for Facebook groups say then there are WhatsApp groups. Ban jate hai. Right. But there are a bunch of Facebook groups. Uh, there are groups of um, like specific regions as well. So uh, there are like proper Indian Facebook groups and Chinese Facebook groups and Filipino Facebook groups oh. and uh, governments and organizations. Community. Correct. Okay organization as well so if for example you just move in here and you do not have a lot of friends from your specific area you can always join these groups and then meet people who belong to the same community same group or same um, state that you belong to so that you are also comfortable communicating with them they'll understand you more and that's how you can build your network really i think that's also an important resource some something that we often overlook but it's very important to have people who speak your language, who come from your area, so that, you know, you can trust them more in comparison because, you know, you have that relatability, relatability yeah. uh, which really helps you. Correct. That's true. Uh, I also think uh, one thing I'd like to add is that always report anything that's unusual immediately. For example, uh, a friend of mine, she was walking just around the campus. I think it was two in the afternoon. So it was like proper daylight people were around etc and just a car passed by and they threw eggs on her it was very weird and she got scared and she took a turn because she was like what's this happening and that car then went around again came back to the same spot and threw more eggs at her so she immediately reported I think uh, uh I think she called 911 I believe so Im immediately reporting anything that is unusual if you see someone walking behind you, following you, or doing something that's not normal, always report it so that you are keeping yourself safe. 